Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled Working on the Railroad. This is the story of a hero, a jet fighter bomber pilot, Captain Jed Enders of the United States Air Force and all the officers of the 49th Fighter Bomber Wing, U.S. Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, plan your tomorrow today. There's a future in flying for you young men who can qualify as aircraft observers in today's global Air Force. If you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, a high school graduate and are otherwise qualified, you have a future in flying as an aircraft observer. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Working on the Railroad. You're a jet fighter bomber pilot in Korea. Your name is Captain Jet Enders. The work you and your buddies do is faithfully reported every day in newspapers back in the States like this. The Allied air war against the communists roared on unabated yesterday. Sabre jets shot down one MiG, and UN fighter bombers blasted communication lines and supported infantry action all across North Korea. How many who read it really understand it? The Sabre jets knocking down MiGs is clear enough, but the fighter bomber part what does it mean? You know what it means, because smashing supply lines and close air support, they're your two Sunday punches, and you deliver them every day of the week, weather permitting, and sometimes weather not permitting. Yes, you know about it, but to tell about it, that's different. Well, it's like this. It's the night before an airstrike. You stop over at Lieutenant Rick Tyner's tent. He's a new boy in the squadron, fresh from stateside. Tomorrow morning, he'll be in the flight you're leading, his first mission. You poke your head through the tent flap. Hi, Rick. Busy? Well, I ain't, Chad. I just finished a letter. Oh? You folks? Yeah, telling them how I expect to see my brother any day now. Well, Bill's back from leaving Tokyo now. His F-86 base is only 100 miles away. You two will get together. Seems funny. Been in Korea two weeks now, and I still haven't seen him. <laughs> Can't believe those shiny new wings are real until the big brother sees them, huh, Rick? <laughs> Something like that. Make it official, you know. It's official in the records. You're a jet fighter pilot for real, like you want it. Fighter bomber. Hmm? That's different than interceptors, sabers. Ah, that's the way the ball bounces. That could be in his squadron, bunking with him, hitting Mig Alley with him. The three of us will get together one of these days soon. Remember, Bill's the best buddy I got in this Air Force. You and Bill, what a combination. I remember when you hit the old hometown after V.E. Day. <laughs> Two hot pilots with all that 8th Air Force fruit salad on our chests. Oh, we really tore the town apart, didn't we? I was in short pants then, but seeing you guys did it for me. Then you ought to take them away they're dealt, like it or not. What do you mean? Drawing fighter bombers. You don't like it. What gives you that idea? Well, you were always talking interceptors, saber jets. Truth is, I expected to get sabers. Mm-hmm. But you got fighter bombers. Some of the Joes in my class got sabers. And nothing will do for you except you're a hot interceptor pilot, Nace, knocking down MiG. And right? I'll be with them as soon as I can. <laughs> you got a tour to do first. Now, unless I get a transfer. Rick, don't do it. Not yet, huh? Wait till you've been working on the railroads. Knocking out communist locomotives and boxcars for a while first. Think I'll change my mind? Working on the railroad changes a man's mind about a lot of things. I'll see you in the morning, Rick. Right, Chad. In the ready room. 
You sit in the smoke-filled briefing shack, dragging deeply on the last cigarette you'll have for several hours, taking in the briefing by the air intelligence officer. Our OK troops yesterday moved forward three miles here on the map. X Regiment, Brigade Hill 306, here on the Central Front. Then the weather officer. Broken layer of three tenths stratocumulus at 8,000. Visibility unlimited, possible haze in the valleys. Noting it all carefully on your map. Jotting the dope down on the mission card you'll take with you. And then the operations officer is getting down to brass tacks. This morning we all have pre-planned missions, gentlemen. Definite targets picked for the group by Joint Operations Center. <laughs> Captain Enders, your flight's call sign is Rainbow Baker. You'll be working on the railroad again. This railroad here, 100 miles behind the central front. Map coordinates, X-ray jig 3174. Got it? Right, Major. Any secondary target for us, Major? You may be diverted to 40th Division. Coordinates, Yoke Dog 5321. The 10th Regiment is having trouble there. Okay? Now, Captain Foster's flight, Charlie is... The other flights in the group get their assignments and takeoff times. In and out courses to target, and then briefing is over. In the equipment room, you put on your yellow May West and parachute. Strap on your pistol and escape kit. Grab your bright red crash helmet with your name stenciled neatly on it and head for the flight line. Rick Tyner steps briskly alongside you as you walk across the taxi strip, heading for your planes. Neither of you talk. There isn't much to say. It'll all be said when you get upstairs. You stand before your squat, earthbound, red-tailed thunder jet, making your ground check, peering under the wings, under the tail, into the landing gear wells, examining the guns, testing the filler caps and the tip tanks. And then they roll out the battery cart that'll feed the extra juice your inert silver bird needs to come alive. You clamber into the cockpit, and with swift, deft motions, you fasten your safety harness, plug in your radio and oxygen mask, and now you're part of the plane. You, its most vital instrument, locked in its innards, giving it life as you cut in the fuel tank and flick the starter switch. You watch the tailpipe temperature gauge rise, Start the automatic flow, and then... The jet engine catches behind you, and are you ready to taxi out to the runway? You call the tower. Tower, this is Rainbow Baker with a flight of four. Taxi and takeoff instructions. Rainbow Baker, this is tower. Cleared to runway 17. Wind 190 at 12 knots. Altimeter 2995. Over. Roger, Tower. So you swing out to the taxiway, lumbering heavily down it toward the runway. Rick follows close behind you. The other two boys in your flight, single filed behind him. At the end of the runway, you pause and make a final check. While a leader and his wingman roar furiously away down the strip, jolt into the air, and soar away in neatly coupled winging flight. Now the runway is yours. You glance over at Rick, and he nods. Tower, this is Rainbow Baker. Are we clear to roll? Cleared to roll, Rainbow Baker. You kick out to the runway, Rick off on your right wing tip. Nose wheel centered, pointed straight down the strip, flaps down. You slowly push the throttle forward, watching the tailpipe temperature gauge. Your feet rammed hard against the brake pedals. <laughs> then you release the brakes to the sudden surge of unbridled power jerks you back in your seat. Now you're rolling, picking up speed as the jet engine builds power. You keep the ship in line by lightly tapping your brake pedals. Your controls bite into the rushing wind. You pull back on the stick and you're airborne. You pull up your landing gear and flaps. And now you have that heady feeling of triumph as you rush away from the earth. You're truly of the air now. Oh. altimeter points almost at 25,000 feet now. Way down below, through the blue haze, you can see the hills and ridges of South Korea, tiny, distant, like a scale model, somehow unreal. Up here, the four of you skate swiftly over glistening cirrus clouds, the sun burning hot through your canopy. Leveling off at 25,000, boys. Back to 92. You're almost at the main line of resistance separating UN forces from the Reds. If you go down on this side of the line, you're in luck. If you go down on their side, you'll need luck. 
But your target is 100 miles on their side. And it's time to report to Tactical Air Control Center. Browbeat, this is Rainbow Baker Leader, inbound with four. Pre-briefed, 500s, rockets, napalm, 50s, over. Rainbow Baker, this is Browbeat. Continuous brief, over. Roger and out, Browbeat. Now you've reported in. You're in the game now. And when you've done your job, you'll check out on the way home. You fly 100 miles into enemy air, and soon you're over the target area. Railroad tracks down below, but no locomotives in sight, no boxcars in sight. So you spiral down to 5,000 feet, looking for your target. Keep your eyes peeled, boys. They're around here somewhere. Roger, boss. See any rolling stock on the tracks down there? Negative, nothing but trees. See those trees at 3 o'clock? They've got no shadow. That's camouflage. Roger. Looks like maybe something's playing possum in there. Probably our boxcars loaded to the gills with ammo. In trail, Rainbow Baker flight, and follow me. After you, Rainbow Baker leader. We'll use bombs. Here we go. Point your nose down now at the clump of trees, half real, half camouflage. And as you barrel down your roller coaster course, the camouflage rips away, revealing the dark shapes of locomotives and bulging boxcars. Then ominous shapes watered under them, and the glint of guns. And bright lights wink from the trees, lobbing lazy golf balls up suddenly, jarring red hot business all about you. And now you've got the first locomotive clear in your sights. You release your bombs and flare out of your dive, bank sharply and climb in a seat heavy, stomach sinking, face tearing maneuver, looking down at the target. Just in time for an explosion from below to bounce you on your ear. You fight to keep the ship under control. And moments later, there's another explosion. And another spray of metal chunks curve into the air through the white black lace smoke as the black guns become silent. And your number three man's excited voice bursts in your earphones. Beautiful shooting, you guys. You got both of them. Let's go in and finish them for keeps. Negative two. Just be wasting ammo. We'll drive on over to our secondary target. See what the mosquitoes got for us. A few minutes later, and you're back over the main line of resistance, the front lines for the infantry boys. You're over your secondary target area, circling at 25,000 feet. So you call for the nearest mosquito, a trainer-type aircraft used to direct air ground strikes. And as you call, you spot one way below. Lady Bird, this is Rainbow Baker leader with four. Over. Lady Bird, X-ray here, Rainbow Baker. Over. Lady Bird, we've got rockets, 50s, and some napalm. What have you got for us? Plenty. A red build-up area, supply dump. Coordinates yoke dog 5321. The 10th Regiment needs help down there. Have you in sight, Lady Bird, but where's the target? That hill, off my right wing. See? That's dead center. Gotcha, Lady Bird. Follow me, Rainbow Baker flight. And now you and your flight are strung out in deadly screaming dives, dropping napalm bombs, jellied gasoline that flames on the blurred, drab, checkered side of a hill that is the enemy build-up point, ripping traces and rockets into tents and shacks and masses of stores. But here the flak is heavy as it studs the sky with tight patches of white bracketing you as you go into each dive. Those poplar trees off to the right, lousy with AA. Stick close, boys. Don't get strung out, or they'll bracket each of us. That hut on the road, I'll take that. Rainbow Baker leader, Jet! This is Rick. I'm hit. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Working on the Railroad. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Today, thousands of alert and intelligent young men are needed to enter aircraft observer training and become flying officers in the United States Air Force. If you act now, you can get a four-month selective service deferment and stand a good chance of being enrolled in a training class before your deferment expires. Upon graduation, you'll receive a commission as a second lieutenant, your silver wings, a liberal uniform allowance, and a starting salary of approximately $5,000 a year. 
In addition, you'll have an interesting and colorful career that offers unlimited opportunities for education and advancement. Why not find out about it right away? For complete information, write to Aviation Cadets, Headquarters, Department of the Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C. Classes begin every two weeks. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Working on the Railroad. Over your secondary target, the enemy flak takes its toll. Your wingman gets hit. Rainbow Baker leader, your wingman's been hit. I heard. Where are you, Rick? Eight o'clock below. Roger. Have you in sight? I'm climbing. Rainbow Baker, three seconds your job. You and four, classroom. We'll go, Rainbow Baker. We'll continue run. How bad is it, Rick? Not good. Joining up on you now, Rick. Right. Kids, you gotta get out of there fast. You're smoking bad. I'm missing parts of my left wing and rudder. Keep climbing if you can. No can do, no power. You've regained some altitude. Enough to jump. How'd I go, buddy? It's getting smoky in here. Duck for cover when you hit the deck. We'll cover you and send for a helicopter. Now get me a chopper, fast. It's lousy with commies down there. And cover me. Get down as low as you can and shoot up everything that moves. I see you. The canopy of your wingman's plane flies off, followed by a dark, hurtling form. And then you watch your best friend's kid brother floating away, falling down beneath a white mushroom of a parachute, drifting toward a gray-green hillside not a mile away from the communists. You call your flight. Rainbow Baker, three and four. Over. Three here, over. Rick's down. See his parachute? Uh, affirmative. Have him in sight. Cover him, boys. Cover him till the helicopter gets here. We'll go, Rainbow Leader. You sent for the chopper yet? About to raise Ramrod now. Joining you at 2,000 to cover him. Ramrod, this is Rainbow Baker Leader. Do you read me? Read you okay, Rainbow Baker. Go ahead. Rainbow Baker Leader. We have a man down here near our secondary target. Did he parachute, Rainbow Baker? Affirmative, Ramrod. He just hit the hillside. We're covering him now. Can you get a neck beater up here? Roger. I'll put it through Joint Operations Center. What are your coordinates? Yoke Dog 5321. Over. Yoke Dog 5321. Roger and out. And minutes later. As you and your number two and three men circle at 2,000 feet, in the tightest circle your swift jets can manage, firing at every movement you see near your down pilot. Rainbow Baker leader, this is Ramrod. Got a chopper in the vicinity. They got our position. Affirmative, Rainbow Baker. They're on their way now. Roger and thanks. We're standing by. Rainbow Baker out. Out to you, Rainbow Baker. Hope they pick up your boy in time. Rainbow Baker, this is Rainbow Baker 3. Troops in the valley there heading for Rick. I see him. Got the napalm left. Uh, a couple tanks. We'll both drop our napalm, then. Get rid of those commies. Your wingman can strafe. Roger. Following you in. So you roar down on the tiny brown figures and pull up and away in a tight circle, looking behind and down to see your napalm bombs hit and shut the valley with a wall of fire, a protective wall between the commies and your wingman on the hill. That did it, Rainbow Baker. They're gone now. Nice work, boy. Rick will owe you plenty for that. Hey, it looks like he may pay off. What do you mean? Here comes this chopper. At three o'clock. Rainbow Baker to helicopter. Do you read me? Read you loud and clear, Rainbow Baker. Over. Got my boy spotted yet? On that hillside? Affirmative. Have his shoot in sight. Good deal. Rick's got more trouble down there, Rainbow Baker. Trouble? Where? They're bringing up a tank. Bottom of the hill. I see him, Rainbow Baker. Better take care of him. I got a couple of rockets left. Well, you better lay him on that tank, then. If it's a race between chopper and tank, chopper loses. Yeah, so will Rick. I'll put that tank out of the running, but quick. Better hurry, Rainbow Baker. That tank's just as close to your pilot as I am. No farther than 500 yards the other side of him. And now you're in your steep dive, carrying those two lethal rockets. The only thing you have that can stop that caterpillar-treaded monster, as you hear... Chopper's hit! Tank nailed it! How bad you hit, helicopter? But now you think of only one thing. 
delivering into the tank's very cannon mouth its destruction, your two deadly rockets. If the chopper can't get to Rick, neither will the tank. Suddenly, the tank fills your gun sights, squat and ugly, and your rocket squirts smokily ahead, dead into target as you flare out of your dive, below you an exploding mass of metal as the tank dies. That's laying it on him, Rainbow Baker. Stop shooting, boy. Chopper, I thought you were hit. Was. Another one like that, and that's all, brother. That's all she wrote. You can make it okay, then? Let him down for your boy now, Rainbow Baker. Make it fast, Chopper. More troops coming. These we can take care of with our 50s. Following you, Rainbow Baker. Got your boy aboard, Rainbow Baker. Let's drive for home, buddy. We'll go, but gladly. Rainbow Baker 3, return to base. No, not yet, Rainbow Baker. Those troops down there firing on the chopper, you'll need help. You'll get it from me. How about us? My fuel counter says it's time you drove home. Well, if we're almost empty, so are you. No use of three of us going down. Get on home, that's an order. We'll go, Rainbow Baker leader. Come on, four. Helicopter, this is Rainbow Baker. Those troops throwing much stuff up at you? No hits so far, but they're sure trying hard. Keep on a straight climbing course. I'll try to help you. What do you got in mind? Their fire seems to be coming from one spot. I'm going to shoot up that spot as often as I can. you make a prime target for them. I'll worry about that. You head south. <laughs> Rainbow Baker lead in a ramrod. Over. Ramrod here, Rainbow Baker. Go ahead. Four rendered. One returning. Over. Two returned earlier, right? Affirmative, Ramrod. And the down pilot picked up by chopper. Understand, Rainbow Baker. Good work. You're cleared to browbeat. Over and out. Out to you, Ramrod. And long minutes later, after you've stared dully at the huge jagged holes in your wings and fuselage, and at the fuel counter, clicking off your few remaining minutes of airborne time. Browbeat, this is Rainbow Baker, leader. Come in, please. This is Browbeat. Go ahead, Rainbow Baker. Crossing friendly lines now, Browbeat. Have you got an emergency field handy? Trouble, Rainbow Baker? Low on fuel. Ship pretty beat up. Can't make it to Pigeon. Uh, try hitting this one. Map coordinates, X-ray sugar 5149. Towers man. Over to you. Understand, Browbeat. Thanks and out. Good luck and out. You're over South Korea now, and you know everything's going to work out all right. And then you spot it. The most beautiful sight you've seen all day. A brand new metal carpeted landing strip, long enough for jets, with shiny, familiar-looking jet fighters parked nearby. And those beautiful things are F-86s, Sabres. Tower, this is Rainbow Baker Leader, the Fox 84. Request immediate clearance for pancake. And you barely listen as the tower hardly clears you for your emergency landing. Because already you can taste the big hot meal you've been promising yourself for the last hour. And the chance to talk with the Sabre boys Rick hasn't caught up to yet. a ticket. Now a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Jed, boy, what kept you? Hey, Rick, yeah. up. I thought you'd be back at the base by now. I don't like beater. Just couldn't make it. Got holes in it. You could poke your fist through. Oh, you ought to see my buggy. That's why I drove in here. Hey, Jed, you know what base this is? Sabre Jets. Should have known you'd hit here with half a chance. It's my brother's base. His group just moved in here. Bill? Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's on his way over here now. Well, that old Airedale, it'll be good to see him. Finally, we get to see him, though we had to get shot at to do it. The guy gets hold of you, and you'll be in Sabres before breakfast tomorrow. Baby. What'd you think of those Sabres lined up outside? Handsome, handsome, mighty handsome. Well, what a <laughs> what? couple hey. of crummy looking Bell. shows. Bell! Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, Jed. Oh, darn it. Ah, they finally pinned the wings on you, eh, little brother? They sure did, Br'er. Uh, you should have seen him today. You'll do all right. Mm -hmm. I got to get him and Sabres somehow. You know, he's always wanted to fly interceptors. You too, buddy. No, not me, Bill. Not this trip. Uh, how about you, kid? Like Jed says, not this trip. Not for me. Rick! 
How come the switch? I don't know. Hey, come here. Maybe, maybe what I saw is doing today. Uh, and maybe it's flying on this poor man's wing. Well, I know how you feel, kid. He was my flight leader my first 50 missions in the 8th Air Force. The three of us will fly him together one of these days. This time. Jed, looks like the old two musketeers got a third jet jockey. Third jet and roaring to go. Hey, Sergeant, fuel down. Three tanks to fill. We got to get this three jet team organized. <laughs> Well, there's your Goonie bird, all warmed up and ready to go. Welcome sight, that C-17. We'll be back at the base inside a couple hours. Ah, uh, it was great seeing you guys. Number one. We'll do it again soon. Next time, approach from the south, huh? In airworthy planes. Ha, 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 will do. Uh-oh, -uh, pilot's impatient. I gotta go, Bill. Ah, uh, so long, Rex. Come on, Jeff. Kid. Come on, Bill. Know. Oh, great guy, that brother of yours. Yeah, the greatest. Hey, you know, you handed me a shot. How so? Not jumping at the idea of joining him and Sabres? Oh, that. Are we about to take off? Huh? Edge of the runway now, yeah. You know, you were right all along, Chet. Mm -hmm. I hoped you'd see it my way. Yeah. I had to learn what it was like first by working on the railroad. <laughs> Young men of America, today there is an urgent need for aircraft observers in your United States Air Force. If you can measure up, here's your chance to get the finest aviation training. Training that equips you to fly in the most modern aircraft in the world and prepares you for executive positions in military aviation. You'll work hard, train hard, and play hard. But when it's over, you'll be a flying officer with a career that will take you as far as you want to go. You graduate from aircraft observer training as a second lieutenant, specializing in radar, navigation, or bombardment. You'll receive a starting salary of approximately $5,000 a year and a liberal uniform allowance. To qualify as an aviation cadet in the aircraft observer training program, you must be a high school graduate, be between 19 and 26 and a half, unmarried, and in good physical condition. If you act now, you can get a four-month selective service deferment and you stand a good chance of being enrolled in a cadet class before your deferment expires. For complete information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station or write to Aviation Cadets, Headquarters, Department of the Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly we hail.